Many scientists call ergothionine a longevity vitamin. It's been seen to increase lifespan in mice by up to 29%, which is not a small effect. There's already multiple papers talking about ergothionine's anti-aging potential, yet hardly anyone in the longevity space talks about it. Chances are you've never heard about it. In this video, I'm going to talk about why ergothionine could be a longevity vitamin and why you might not want to take it as a supplement. So why does ergothionine have benefits for longevity? Ergothionine is a powerful antioxidant that fights oxidative stress, inflammation, and cell senescence, while also protecting the mitochondria. It works synergistically with other antioxidants like glutathione and superoxide dismutase to protect DNA and lower inflammation. Because of that, it has potential for improving metabolic disorders, cardiovascular disease, liver disease, neurodegenerative diseases, and other inflammatory diseases. Another way ergothionine has longevity benefits is by increasing NAD levels and enhancing mitochondrial function. We obviously don't have studies looking at if ergothionine would extend lifespan in humans, but there's some potential evidence for ergothionine improving brain health. Ergothionine is seen to accumulate in vulnerable organs that have the most mitochondria, such as the brain and the eyes. It can easily cross the blood-brain barrier thanks to the ergothionine transporters, and it has antioxidant effects on the brain. That's why you have several human studies showing that ergothionine might improve cognition and memory. A 2024 randomized controlled trial on older adults saw that supplementing 10 mg or 25 mg a day of ergothionine improved multiple cognitive domains in 4 to 6 weeks, including reaction times, executive functioning, complex attention, and verbal memory. 25 mg a day also improved sleep and prospective memory. Another 2024 pilot study on 19 older adults with mild cognitive impairment saw that 25 mg of ergothionine thrice a week for a year improved verbal memory and learning. They also saw a biomarker of neurodegeneration called neurofilament light chain stabilizing, indicating that ergothionine may protect brain cells from accumulating damage. Low plasma ergothionine levels in humans have been seen to predict neurodegeneration and cognitive decline, so having higher ergothionine levels might have neuroprotective effects against dementia. By regulating inflammation and oxidative stress, ergothionine also improves sleep, as shown by the 2024 study on older adults. In another 2022 randomized controlled trial, 20 mg of ergothionine improved subjective sleep quality while increasing deep NREM sleep and reducing sleep wakefulness as well as waking up after sleep onset. They also saw increased serum antioxidant markers. So where do we get ergothionine? Because our body can't make it itself. Ergothionine is a sulfur-containing amino acid derived from histidine. However, mammals can synthesize ergothionine and thus you can only get it from food. However, humans do have a dedicated ergothionine transporter called ergothionine transporter or ETT. The more complex scientific name is SLC22A4. It's found in the small intestine, brain, liver, kidney, placenta, and immune cells. So our body have a mechanism for absorbing ergothionine from the food. And the reason we have it is because we ate it in the past. What food are we talking about? Mushrooms. The main food source of ergothionine are mushrooms, because mushrooms can synthesize ergothionine unlike animals or higher plants. Low levels of ergothionine are associated with higher cardiovascular disease mortality, dementia, and all-cause mortality. Countries with the highest intake of ergothionine, such as Italy and France, have much lower rates of mortality than those with low ergothionine intake, such as the US. Americans consume less than 1.1 mg per day of ergothionine, whereas Italians get 4.6 mg per day. So I would say that it's a good idea to get at least 4 mg of ergothionine per day from your diet. Now, ergothionine can be obtained from what you would consider healthy foods. Mushrooms, vegetables, garlic, onions, tempeh, as well as some seafood. So it is an association when it comes to health benefits. But in mechanistic studies, as well as the animal models, ergothionine does have longevity benefits. So it's not a far fetch to suggest that ergothionine would have those similar benefits in humans. When speaking of the randomized controlled trials, then the efficacious dose is seen to be around 25 milligrams a day. You could take a supplement for it, but I think that it's unnecessary. That's because mushrooms have a whopping 630 to 1300 milligrams of ergothionine per kilogram. In a regular dish that contains perhaps 100 grams of mushrooms, you'd get around 60 to 100 milligrams of ergothionine. That's more than enough for the brain benefits, and it's three times more than it was suggested in the study. Tempeh also contains 201 milligrams per kilogram of ergothionine. So if you consume 100 or 200 grams of tempeh, you'd get around 20 to 40 milligrams of ergothionine, which is again more than enough. Chicken liver has 47 milligrams of ergothionine, but realistically you're eating around 10 to 30 grams of liver in one sitting, which would give you around 0.5 to 1.5 milligrams of ergothionine. 
that's lower than what seems to be optimal for daily intake of at least 4 mg and up to 25 mg. Processed foods don't have any or very minimal amount of ergothionine, so eat more whole foods and perhaps add some more mushrooms to your diet, such as chanterelle, portobello, champignon or others, because they're very high in ergothionine. Overall, there's not that much clinical studies on ergothionine, but there are a few human studies suggesting that ergothionine improves cognition and memory. We do know that it has potent antioxidant and mitochondrial supporting effects, and it seems to extend lifespan in animals. But I don't think that you need to supplement ergothionine. To get 25 mg of ergothionine per day, you can just add some more mushrooms or some of the other foods that I mentioned to your diet. Overall, I would rank ergothionine kind of an interesting supplement with a lot of potential, but we do need more studies about it. Right now, I would stick to primarily getting it from food. If you want to know how I rank 100 other popular supplements, then check out my video about it next.